Before I start the video, I just wanted to make a special announcement that I will be doing a 2021 year-end giveaway to my subscribers for all the support you guys have given me, so stick to the end of the video to find out more details about it. 2021 is about to end and this year was definitely interesting to say the least. NFTs became really huge, which I still don't understand. Jeff Bezos went to space on a penis rocket. Facebook changed their name to Meta, that was a thing. <laughs> You serious? Elon Musk was named person of the year and we even got a new variant of COVID that sounds like an off-brand transformer which is always amazing to hear. This is fine. But despite all that, at least 2021 gave us some of the best animes we could possibly ask for and if you ask me what was the best anime of the year, I honestly couldn't even answer that question. That's why I thought fuck it, I'll just list out all the animes that I watched this year that I personally think was good and the anime choices are just my opinions so feel free to grill me in the comments down below for my shitty taste. So here are my picks for the best animes of 2021 in no particular order. Eh? The beginning of 2021 seemed like a good start for anime with so many amazing ones coming back but what caught my attention at the start was an isekai that many called the father of isekai, Mushoku Tensei Jobless Reincarnation. Being the isekai trash that I am, I just had to watch it and my god, an isekai has no business being this good and boy did Mushoku Tensei hit me like a truck. It basically starts with the protagonist Rudius as we see what he was like before he got reincarnated, a lazy and disgusting ugly bastard that was disowned by his family. However, when he tried to save a group of teenagers from Trakun, he unfortunately got killed and he was given a second chance and he was reincarnated into a new world filled with magic with his memories intact. But unlike most isekais, Mushoku Tensei does it very differently. Despite having all his memories, the trauma and past experiences were not forgotten because even if you are reincarnated, it doesn't instantly make all your flaws and issues go away. Instead, it constantly serves as a reminder to Rudius that he was a fucked up person in his previous life and this gave him the drive to become a better person. And not only that, the show also doesn't magically put Rudius into an adult body with overpowered skills or skip over his childhood in this new world. Instead, it shows us his growth from start to finish, how he managed to train himself to become the quote-unquote overpowered protagonist he is today. This aspect of Mushoku Tensei is really what makes it so different and interesting from other isekais. The fact that we get to go on this journey of redemption and self-improvement with not just Rudius, but the other side characters as well. Seeing the highs and the lows, the pretty and ugly sides of everyone we meet throughout the series, it makes them feel like realistic human characters instead of stereotypical caricatures. The show has so much to offer story and character wise, but if I talk about them here, it would take all day, so feel free to check out my other video where I went over it in much more detail. However, I do have to at least mention that the production quality of Mushoku Tensei is truly out of this world. I mean, it's not surprising considering they formed Studio Bind, a completely new studio solely for this anime. Everything looks fluid and natural while it captivates and immerses you into the world of Mushoku Tensei even down to the smallest of details. Like there's a scene in part 2 where Rudius is just breaking up a piece of bread. Like seriously, just a piece of bread and they put in all that effort to animate it. Like what the fuck man, that is commitment. If I had to choose the true winner of the best anime of the year, just from the pure effort and commitment from Studio Bind is honestly enough to convince me that Mushoku Tensei deserves this title more than any other anime this year. <sighs> now I honestly can't talk about an isekai without bringing up another one of my favourite isekais this year which is the second season of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Although the first season was more wholesome and happy-go-lucky with Rimuru just trying to build up his monster nation, the second season is much more intense with higher stakes and challenges that will truly test Rimuru's skills and patience as a leader. The second season also has plenty of new interesting characters that were introduced like my boy Diablo finally appearing and seeing the Demon Lord Council was just incredible. Everything good about season 1 has been brought over to season 2 with some additional improvements to the pacing, character development, story writing and world building of the show. And as a light novel reader, I have to say that 8-bit has done an amazing job at adapting the source material without changing or cutting out too much of the original content. That time I got reincarnated as a slime may not be as crazy as Mushoku Tensei but it's definitely one of my top picks for anime of the year.
Speaking of that time I got reincarnated as a slime, I have to say the spin-off series Tensura Nikki really surprised me at how cute and funny it was. As you can probably guess, it takes place outside of the events shown in the original and instead it gives us a look at the day-to-day -day life of Rimuru and his companions. It has all the quirks and essence of the main series but with a slightly cuter art style change to the overall characters without any of the big dramas or ongoing storyline. Since there are no big bad in Tensura Nikki for Rimuru and his companions to fight, the show can focus more on the side characters so they are able to get more screen time and really show off more of their personality as characters. I especially enjoyed how they really expanded on the friendship Rimuru had with Milim. Tensura Nikki may not be plot heavy or intense like the main story but it sure as hell is a fun and easy to watch spin-off that left me with a smile every time. <laughs> Now this list wouldn't be complete without talking about the comeback of the year from Kyoto Animation. After suffering from the tragic arson attack in 2019, Kyoto Annie came back strong and better than ever with season 2 of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. It still retains the high production values that we are familiar with from Kyoto Annie but with an added flair to the visuals and animation that would put most animes to shame. Although season 2 is essentially still the same story about experiencing new things in life and the different dynamic structure of a family, I have to say it has definitely become much bolder with the concepts, tackling familiar slice of life topics with a measure of character growth that is sure to resonate with people. Season 2 isn't afraid to stray from its schedule formula by introducing flashbacks which showcase the past experiences that affected our beloved dragons and how much they have grown from it. But don't worry, despite the shift in story structure, the trademark comedy of Dragon Maid is still there with even more hilarious shenanigans from our dragons and don't forget about the introduction of Ilulu, a very tragic and interesting albeit controversial character. <laughs> Like I said, this was a great year for anime and I was definitely happy that Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid came back and is now better than ever. Quintessential Quintuplus is one of the first harem animes that got me into the genre and it really changed my perception about what a harem anime should be. So it's not surprising that season 2 of Quintessential Quintuplus would be on my list. Admittedly, season 1 felt a bit lackluster for me so I went into season 2 without much expectations and I found myself enjoying this season a lot more than the first because this time around, I could feel the characters, especially the girls, acting less like the stereotypical character archetypes and they were given more time to shine to show off their personality. I mean season 2 somehow managed to make me go from hating Nino to rooting for her as best girl. Overall, Season 2 has better story pacing and character writing than Season 1 and even the animation itself has been heavily improved at the cost of the thick thighs of the Nakano sisters. So yeah, Season 2 of Quintessential Quintuplus was really enjoyable for me this year and there's a reason why I still think it's one of the most wholesome harem animes I've ever watched. <laughs> I'm always a sucker for good romantic comedy animes so when Horimiya came out at the start of the year and after hearing all the hype for it, I just had to watch it and it was a pretty damn good show. The show is basically about Hori, the perfect, headstrong and independent popular girl of the school and Miyamura, a gloomy and quiet person who has given up on the world. The two of them have seemingly extreme personalities that no one would ever expect to become friends but in reality they do share some odd similarities with each other. And thanks to Hori's younger brother Sota, Miyamura and Hori manage to become friends and slowly open up to show their hidden sides where they will eventually start developing feelings for each other. Although Horimiya does have the conventional tropes that you would find in any rom-coms, but what makes it different is that they don't completely focus on just Hori and Miyamura. They give the side characters time to develop as well, how they interact with the main characters and the different dynamic of their relationships with each other. There are no real huge dramas between characters and they don't suffer from the same mistake that most rom-coms have, which is dragging out or leaving the relationship of the main characters ambiguous. They are straight to the point, wholesome and honestly just a delight to watch. I think Cloverworks has done an amazing job with the animation and art of Horimiya but my only problem was that they ended the series way too early and skipped a lot of the more interesting stories the manga had. <laughs> Now that I got the wholesome ones from my list out of the way, let's talk about 86, one of the best political mecha animes to come out this year. The story of 86 is set in a world where the Giardian Empire, a highly technologically advanced nation, has declared war on all its neighboring countries and they have unleashed the Legion, an unstoppable AI army to fight for them. Basically, the anime is split into two parts and the first part takes place in the Republic of San Magnolia. 
Because the Republic was losing the war and being forced into a corner, the majority population of the White Hat Albas decided to prosecute all the non Albas S 86, ordered to be sent to fight their war as autonomous drones. Part 1 was committed to showcase the brutal nature of war and how easy it is for humans to justify cruelty when they have no other choice, and the main themes of racism, discrimination, and injustices that can often happen during war or even normal life. But when it transitions to part 2 of the anime where it takes place in the newly formed Federal Republic of Giyad, the tones and themes of the show change to tackle new issues like PTSD and the sentimentality of soldiers that have been conditioned to knowing only a life in the midst of battle and chaos. We see how the 86 that survived in part 1 try to find another purpose in life and what they can do to reintegrate into normal society. This is what made 86 such a good show in that both the underlying themes exploring racism and sentimentality tie insanely well into what it has to say about human nature and society. But besides having an impactful and thought-provoking story, a political mecha anime wouldn't be complete without badass action scenes and A1 Pictures definitely delivered with some really clean fight animations. By the way, the music is done by the goat Hiroki Sawano himself, so do I even need to say more? <laughs> Moving on is another political war anime and possibly one of the most anticipated animes to be released during winter 2021, the final season of Attack on Titan, and I'm pretty sure it needs no introduction. With 8 years in the making, we are almost at the end game for one of the most influential animes of the past decade and honestly, god knows when we will be getting another anime like this ever again. To think that it all started back in 2013 where we first witnessed the iconic appearance of the Colossal and Armored Titans destroying the walls of paradise when it still used to be just a fairly straightforward survival story, now it has become an intricate story filled with political drama, social commentaries and the philosophical questions of who is right or wrong. And the way they started the season by shifting our perspective from the audience on Paradise to the nation of Mali, letting us learn about their side of the story and their own justifications for the hatred and prosecutions of the audience on the island and the mainland is truly a nice touch. This creates a moral dilemma for us as we question ourselves whether or not the actions of both sides were justified because in war, both sides are deluded by their own beliefs so much so that there isn't a speck of question as to if they might be wrong or right in their actions. But having said that, I think what really made the final season stand out is definitely Aaron's growth as a character. He went from an edgy crybaby in the previous seasons to a cold and calculating Giga Chat. Seeing his descent from the protagonist to an antagonist is quite satisfying to watch. However, I need to address the elephant in the room and that's the CGI titans and the studio change from Wit to Mappa. In my opinion, I like what Mappa did with the animation and I was fine with the CGI titans but other than that, everything else for the final season was pretty amazing and this is honestly the best contender to fight Mushoku Tensei as the best anime of the year. Now that I've talked about all the bigger animes on my list, let's move on to one of the most underrated animes this year, Odd Taxi. It's a refreshing and clever mix of genres and styles, and it tells a complex but ultimately grounded and human story interwoven in an equally well-construed mystery. The way the show follows Hiroshi Odokawa, an eccentric and reserved taxi driver and how he meets different kinds of unique individuals that may seem like normal interactions for his line of work, somehow ends up turning his simple life upside down as he gets entangled in the mystery of a missing high school girl. Nothing in the show happens out of coincidence and everything is connected one way or another that brings the set and characters together for such idiosyncratic events like this. It's a don't blink or you might miss it kind of show and many have even compared its conversational tone to that of Tarantino films like Reservoir Dog and The Hateful Eight. Odd Taxi really came out of nowhere this year and surprised many fans, myself included, and I do think that it does deserve to be one of the many best animes of the year. The next anime on my list is Vivi Flora Aisong, an anime original that was written by Nagatsuki Tepe, the author of ReZero and animated by Studio Wit. The story takes place in a world where humans and AI robots live together but one day the AI started to kill all the humans, so a scientist decides to send an AI named Matsumoto a hundred years into the past with the mission to correct history with the help of Vivi, the first ever autonomous AI. Now I know the concept of AIs turning on humans is nothing new and has been done countless times but Vivi does it differently by including provoking questions about finding purpose and what it means to be human. This aspect made Vivi really enjoyable especially seeing the character interactions between humans and AIs. 
Although the story has some issues when it comes to time travel tropes and cliches, it honestly didn't affect much of the enjoyment I had for the show. Vivi Flora Ai Song is definitely a very enjoyable anime that deserves more recognition and not to mention the incredible songs that Vivi sang as well. That's why it's on my list. Finally, another one of the biggest looked over show this year is none other than Osama Ranking. The premise of the show is fairly simple, the young prince Boji was born deaf and mute so he was always looked down upon by the people around him. However, he never showed any signs of weaknesses to others and still tries his best to achieve his dream of becoming the greatest king in the world. Now the bright colours and art style of Osama Ranking may trick you into believing that it's going to be just a typical wholesome coming away story about a kid fighting adversities but it's so much more than that. There's real emotional depth and dramatic resonance between characters, deeply disturbing and dark mysteries that constantly keep you on your feet. Each character that we meet is unpredictable, they may seem like cliches at first but the show somehow subverts all that and instead giving us truly human characters. And the biggest aspect I enjoyed about Osama Ranking is the fact that Boji isn't defined by his disabilities. Instead, they use it as a stepping stone to help motivate Boji to overcome his weaknesses. Osama Ranking is unlike anything else I have seen this year in terms of setting and story. To do with really is on the roll with their animes this year. My only problem with Osama Ranking is that Sony took down my video on this amazing anime for no apparent reason so I'm still salty about that but other than that, this is easily one of the biggest underdog animes of the year. Before I end this, there are a couple of animes that I enjoyed but don't think it deserves to be considered as anime of the year so I'll just be giving them an honourable mention. The first one is Tuck of Destiny. I understand the mixed reception for this original anime but I personally thought it was honestly a really fun action anime with amazing animations and the setting of the world was equally as interesting especially all the different waifu music arts. <laughs> Next is an isekai known as So I'm a Spider So What. It's an isekai about a group of students being reincarnated and one of the girls was somehow reincarnated as a spider and she became insanely overpowered. It has the same vibe as Tensura but definitely not as story heavy. Despite that, it's an anime I still enjoyed a fair bit because of how unique it was. Now the last one that also deserves a special mention is the Duke of Death and his mate. It's basically about a lonely duke who was abandoned by his own family due to a curse that made him kill any organisms that he touches. The story feels interesting and original. The characters while not all that interesting are still decent and this is a sexual harassment lawsuit waiting to happen. However, it didn't make it on my main list simply because I found the CGI a bit stiff but it was still good enough for an honourable mention. <laughs> So regarding the giveaway, I will be giving away 3 $50 Amazon gift cards to 3 random subscribers and to enter, all you need to do is to be a subscriber. I will be announcing the winner 7 days from the time that this video goes up in my community tab so you still have a chance to enter if you haven't already subscribed. That's basically everything and what do you think about my picks for the best anime of 2021? Feel free to share your personal list in the comment section down below, I would love to see them. If you enjoyed the video, like, share and subscribe and also hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all my content. 2021 has been an amazing year for the channel. I wanted to thank all the subscribers and everyone else who supported me. I really do appreciate you guys. Again, thanks for all the support. I wish everyone a happy new year and as always, stay safe everyone.